Hey there, so in this video we are going to see how to create an actual inbox manager inside of Airtable that is able to handle more than 100 different clients. There are different things such as the interface inside Airtable, uh, the automations inside Airtable, as well as the other automations. So without further ado, let's get started and let's show all the interface. Okay, so the idea here was the, how do we actually create an inbox management process that is able to handle more than 100 clients and what are the different components that are important for this and what are the different tools and what are the different approaches that we take in this. So this came up from a client uh, request. We wanted to build an inbox manager that was easy to handle, uh, that um, sit on smart lead API, but also add some additional features such as ability to uh, sort the lead categories, the ability to sort all the lead responses in a faster and effortless way, sending all the different uh, leads to the client database when they were ready, uh, send custom responses to clients in a way where if you don't have a response to a specific question, you can just ask the client to fill out a form and add that response, and then also the ability to handle the client calendar for faster appointment book. Is, which is something that we are still working on, but I wanna, uh, uh, I wanna show this to you so you can have um, a better idea of how that could work and how that could also be implemented. So in regards to that, what we did was we started with uh, implementing the different fields and the, the different fields that are present inside the email responses because we will need the different information and we will need to use is different information in different ways for the interface as well as for the automation that we're going to cover next. So in regards to the email responses, what we got over here are a bunch of different basic information about what we can get from the uh, email responses, such as lead name, email, send reply, uh, reply message, as well as other additional information for the campaign, the client, and then some additional fields uh, uh, to uh, sort the responses uh, in the best possible way inside the interface. So uh, the tool that we choose to build this out is Airtable base, build the inbox manager, as well as make to handle all the different parts related to the automation. And I want to also show you how uh, Airtable and make communicate with each other. So you have a better idea on how to set up that for yourself also. So in regards to the interface, the interface looks uh, uh, something like this. So um, here uh, we are able to divide the interface into different categories based on what the client needs. So here, for example, this is the template, but here we have unread responses, lead categorization and clients responded, but uh, we also have additional fields such as all clients responded and uh, things like that. Uh, so what we are able to do over here is we can check the box is the response is read and then go straight to the next response uh, for easy and fast management of the different responses. So uh, it feels like you need to um, have an inbox zero. So you need to finish all the responses that you have in a very sequential order. So you start off with the first one, and then after that, you uh, tag the, the respective lead category, uh, you push the lead status, and then you go on with the, with the next response. Or possibly you add the, uh, the, you send to the client the database, the lead, and things like that. So this is how the structure works. And there are a couple of important components. First off, there's this part related to send to client database, which uh, what, what this does is uh, it takes the lead, uh, maybe you have a specific lead that is at a certain point in the stage. Uh, so for example, you already booked the meeting with the lead or you sell paper interested leads, so you need to send the lead to the database and um, you basically click the button and then this is automatically sent to the, uh, to the client database. You can start off with something like uh, uh, Google Sheets, for example. So you create a, a shared Google Sheet with the client and with you. And in this way, you are able to uh, send all the leads uh, directly to this Google Sheet. But later on, what you can also use is you can implement additional CRMs. So if uh, you have different clients that work with the close, you can implement close to the automation. So you are able to uh, have the client API 
and directly send the information to the close uh, um, CRM or AppFot to come uh, can be done the same thing. And uh, um, yeah, a lot of different things can be done on the client database. But I want to also show you that later on. So what we have over here is we have uh, different responses, different information. We are able to um, to update the lead category and update the list status manually over here, as well as syncing that out inside, uh, um, as well as syncing that out. So right now, I also would like to show you a couple of the automations that are built on top of that, specifically the ones uh, that have some buttons that trigger some actions uh, outside of the Airtable interface. So what we have is something along those lines. These are, those are Airtable automations that can be built directly inside of the table. You need a, um, you need a pro plan to, uh, to build those, but this is very, very cool because you are able to send information from our table directly to uh, another tool, which, uh, which is make in our example, using a very similar script all the time. So here you have a simple automation inside our table. So when a button is clicked, you run a script, uh, which is a custom script, a custom JavaScript script that uh, you set out. So in this case, for example, what we have is we automatically send a webhook to make.com. So this is uh, the flow uh, over here. Uh, you click a button, uh, a webhook is sent, and this triggers the make.com. So this is an example of uh, the sent to client database. Here we have the push request uh, uh, received. We automatically close, close the window, so there's no issue with uh, having the window open and things like that. And we are able to directly uh, add, the, um, add the client to the database and uh, um, add the client to the database, possibly also notify the client and uh, possibly also add the client, uh, add the list of uh, do not contact uh, to the client database. So they are able to take, uh, take an order of, also on this kind of thing. Then there are additional things over here. So there's an example here that is called send custom response to client, which I want to show you uh, in depth. So what happens sometimes is that you, um, you receive a response that you are not able to answer. So you need to go back and forth with you and the client to send an email asking, hey, we received this, how we can respond to the, uh, to the prospect. And this makes, uh, uh, makes you lose a lot of time. So what you can have, it's uh, um, something along those lines. This works essentially the same uh, for, uh, on the beginning, but this uh, received the custom response. And then when this is received, an email is created and sent to the client. So let me let me show you the email and let me show you the form that was sent. So you have a better idea. So here's an example of uh, the message that you receive. You receive something along the lines where uh, the lead needs a response. You uh, ask the client uh, uh, about that, and then the client uh, can click this link where it would automatically send a response. So when you go through this link, you have a form. So here uh, you just write how you would respond to the client. So the client would uh, uh, respond on his behalf and uh, you take this response, you can modify it to, to your needs and then you send that to uh, the lead. So this is a way to uh, to handle the custom response part in a way that is way easier and way simpler than going back and forth with the client and working uh, this. And uh, yeah, there are also additional things that you need to keep into consideration when building this kind of system. First off is making sure that you add the responses inside our table. So here we have a way to add the responses in a, uh, in a way where we check if the lead is already present in the database or not. And if so, if it's already present, um, if it's already present, we update the responses both on the lead side of thing as well as uh, in the database side of thing. Uh, but if it's not present, we get all the lead information, such as uh, 
the different fields such as the company name, the website, the custom fields uh, that might be interesting for us uh, that we can use later on for different kinds of analysis and add in the lead result. And then there are two other additional components that are interesting here, which is uh, related to uh, the lead category update and the lead category sync. So every time you work on different things uh, that involve uh, syncing between uh, two different things, so sending the data to our table and making sure that the data is synced uh, between our table and uh, uh, smart lead, you need to do uh, you need to create uh, two different scenarios. One for pushing the data from Airtable. So you do a change in Airtable and you want this change to be reflected into your own platform. In this case, we, we use Smartly and uh, there's uh, something like that, uh, which is a manual category lead update. So what happens here is uh, we modify the lead category. We push that through a button inside the Airtable interface. And when that is done, we update the lead category. The other way around is when the lead category is changed. So for example, we change the lead category within Smart Lead uh, from wrong person to do not contact, for example. And uh, uh, when we change that, we update uh, the lead category. And what we also do is we update the lead category into the client database. And um, yeah, so those are a couple of different things, but uh, what are some additional things? So first off, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can add additional theorems depending on the client. So if you work with a lot of clients that have HubSpot, for example, you can have uh, you can add an additional thing here that is related only to handling um, yeah, handling different kinds of database. So you can handle HubSpot, you can handle Cloud, and if none, uh, if the client don't have that kind of database you revert back to Google Sheets and you just send good old Google Sheets to your clients. So that is, the, that is on that side. And another thing that you can do, which is very interesting and something that I'm exploring and I will cover in a later video, is check the client's calendar and add the availability directly through email. So what we have over here is this is done mainly with cal.com. So you will need to have a way to connect your uh, client calendar uh, to check for availability. And we do that with cal.com because this is free instead of using Calendly Premium for all your clients. And it allows you to get all the availability from the client. And then what you can do is you take this availability, you pass that through ChatGPT through a prompt, and in that way you are able to create a message such as, are you available at uh, uh, Monday uh, 3 p.m. or something along those lines? In this way, uh, this is really powerful for um, appointment setting and making sure that the appointment setting process is very smooth. So I'll cover this one later on in the video. Uh, now, uh, this is finished. Hope you find some value on this, uh, uh, on this document over here. Uh, if uh, you would like uh, also to build something similar to this, just let me know. I'm more than happy to help you design your specific system you in a way that is able to handle a lot of clients and is able to uh, streamline and uh, reduce their response times, help you book more, uh, more meetings. Hope you have an amazing uh, day. Bye-bye.